it helps us to improve the understanding of the problem the information may not be same as we require the first instance i might not be able to get the exact data sufficiency adequate data should be available from the external resources that is from outside the organization these kinds of data are not directly government published syndicate services is very much needed altogether good morning and welcome to session 3 in unit 2 in business research methods where we are going to speak about a very very important and interesting topic known as the secondary research advantages and disadvantages of the secondary data now secondary data is the data that has already been collected by and the readily available from the other resources so now what is happening here is that when we are talking about the secondary data as you look into the screen here you will be able to see that data is already there it's in the form of google it's in the form of uh, probably in any internet public uh, resources or it is there already published in journals or anywhere now what is happening in the word secondary data is that this is a kind of data which is already been researched already been typed across and it has been taken care all together so what i want to say here is that secondary data is already the effort that is put in in terms of the researcher and it's available for the public to read it now this is very very cheap quickly obtainable than the primary data and may also be able to replace or go for the primary data at some point of time why because many a times the researcher might feel that sir i am not getting the primary data can i just go ahead with the secondary data itself so this is a very very validate very very important point altogether why i bring this point here for you to think is that when you think about research please also think about the stand very very clearly see in research what happens is that data needs to be segregated and authenticated at every point of time what most of the researchers try to do is that they just want to follow a convenient method an easier method to obtain the results so the easiest way to do a research is just take over the secondary data republish it refurbish it all together and just start making up a new research but that will not validate your results that will not give an edge to your outcome so that is why it is important for all of us to make a very very clear judgment as in what kind of data and at what levels we have to select this data now moving further let's try to talk about the advantages of the secondary data first thing it is economical second it saves efforts and expenses now it is time saving in nature it helps to make primary data collection more specific within the help of the secondary data now if you look here it is economical which means to say for most of us we don't have to spend money or there is no external cost involved in terms of searching for the data or building up with that data why this is important for all of us today is that many a times you will be worried about this factor how is that the data is going to be available for all of us and how is that the data is going to be built in in terms of the value now what does data typically do here is that data only will give you the value immediately the data will only tell you on that spot that you know it is available here so you just have to download you don't have to spend any money and then it gets into the economical factor altogether so that's why i would say that it saves on efforts and expenses altogether now this is what i would say it is a time saving factor altogether it's very very important for all of us 
because it saves on the time factor. Second thing is that it helps to make primary data collection more specific since with the help of secondary data we will be able to know this is what exactly we are looking for and when we look for this data there we easily take it and start adapting it towards the research factor altogether. The next thing is that it helps us to improve the understanding of the problem which is very very important in the modern days I would say. Why? Because most of the researcher fail to understand what is the exact problem. Many people assume that there is a problem, they start working out on the problem, they start understanding that this is the problem and they just go about it. So that is why I would say that this is not the real problem, this is not the real thing that we are looking for. On the other side, this is the factor that we are talking about. This is the concept that we are trying to understand all about. So once we have to understand the problem, we have to understand what are all the factors that are involved. Based on that factor, we will be able to solve the method. We will be able to go further altogether. Next thing, it provides a basis for comparison of data that is collected by the researcher. So it will actually provide you a platform. It will actually tell you that this is the comparison from data and it is collected by the research. So this is a parity. There is a comparison factor. There is a lot of importance in terms of how this data is being calculated, how it is being done. So it, it provides you a basic foundation on which you can take it further and you will be able to understand how this data is being done. The next thing is that the disadvantages of the secondary data. Secondary data is something that seldom fits into the framework of marketing research factors. So it isn't into something that gets in terms of building into the marketing research factors. Why? Because when you are talking about marketing research, you have to primarily go into the data space. You have to primarily go into the system to understand how things are, how well built the system is and how it moves all together. So basically the secondary data is trying to tell you on a framework, on a basis of how the marketing factors work, where it is working and how does it come into picture. The unit of secondary data collection, suppose you want the information on a disposable income for example, but the data is available for a gross income. So now what happens, you are actually trying to find some information but you will land up getting some other information. So that's another disadvantage that you can talk about the secondary data. The information may not be same as we require. This is the biggest challenge for every researcher. Now, when you are looking for a particular kind of information and that information is not available, then automatically your research will take a backstand altogether. You will not be able to go support it. Then again, you have to come back and say that research is incomplete. So in that sense, I would always say that the information that we are trying to find, that we are trying to analyze, that we are finding it uh, difficult to come back and say about it, that becomes dangerous, that becomes challenging enough in secondary data because that does not support your exact research. The class boundaries may be different because you might be looking into an age bracket of 25 to 30, for example, then you get a data from 35 to 50. Now, that is not what your research is exactly looking into. So the class boundaries, the intervals, the exact time limit, the exact phase in which you are looking into the data is not getting in picture with you, in synchronization with you. So that is why I would say that class boundaries have to be looked forward. Accuracy of the secondary data is not known. So accuracy part, this has to be validated. This has to be understood very, very clearly. What is the accuracy level? Because it might not be correct to the last word. The secondary data is always a published data. In what sense it is published? In what applications? In what level? When it was taken? Whether it was taken from a trusted resource 
all those factors comes into picture. So the accuracy of the secondary data is always under a questionable factor. Next, the data may be outdated, which is very, very true. Sometimes when you might be looking in for the recent data, you will get a data starting from 2000 or 2010 or you might be even getting a probably a data in the year 1990 altogether. So in those kind of things, the data is outdated. That is not the data what we are looking for. So in that sense, what will happen? The secondary data can prove to be a disadvantage again. Now, how are you going to evaluate the data? Because of the above mentioned factors that we are talking about the evaluation of secondary data is very very important now the evaluation is not going to happen so easily why because you have to understand the steps that are involved in it and each and every step has to be understood and then we have to find out whether this data can be taken into picture can be understood as the correct one the first thing that we are going to start with is availability it has been seen that the data which you want is available or not it you know for example let's say that i am trying to find out the data in terms of the economic value of GDP from 1950 to 1960. So I'm looking out for a 10 year economic data of 1950 to 1960. Now what happens is that when I go and search for this data, the first instance, I might not be able to get the exact data. I might get some data which is in 1955, 58 or 59, but then I might not be able to get the exact data of 1950 to 1960. In that case, it is always suggestible that you go back to the primary data. Now, I cannot go back to 1950, but then what I'm trying to make you understand is that go in for a situation where you are not able to get secondary, then go back to the primary data. Why? Because primary data is a first-hand data which will make you understand and also your research that it is very much clearly inbuilt and it has got nothing to lose because it is all clear and you have taken the data, you are the evidence, everything that is recorded is to the truth till the last level. So in that sense, the availability factor, whether it is available there, it is better rather than going in for some fictitious data, go in for the real data that will help you to make your research even more better. The next thing is the relevance. As I was telling you, it should be able to meet the requirement of the problem. The units of measurement should be same. The concepts used in currency data should match. Many a time what people think is the equivalent and not the equal value. Now, for example, if we are going to study about four wheelers under the four wheeler segment, there are different types of cars. There are cars, there are sedan type, there is a compact type, there is SUV type, there is an MUV type. There are different types of four wheelers that are available in the market. But then if my research is concerned only with the SUVs, that is the sports utility vehicle, and I start comparing this data with the sedan class because they are also four wheelers. Then I'm doing a different research. I'm doing completely a wrong in the research what I'm trying to go about. Why? Because my data has to be related to only SUV vehicles and not to the four wheelers belonging to the sedan class. In that sense, what happens is that the data and the research does not match and this leads into problem. So that is why we say that when you are measuring the units, whatever you are taking, you need to compare apple versus apple, not apple versus orange. That will not work out there. So whenever you are doing this uh, comparison, whenever you are using out the data, the relevance factor, it should point out clearly that this is what we are and this is the relevance to it. This is the context of reference to it. Then only the research will become even more better in nature, followed by the accuracy part, as I was telling you, there are certain specifications and methodology in which you have to do it. Why? Because if you are not accurate, if you are not confident, if you are not using the right method of thinking at any given point of time, 
then automatically the research will fail. Once the research fails, then you will not be able to go to the public and tell that this is a validated research. So what we try to do is the specification and methodology, the margin of error, the dependability of the source. So specify what method you have used to come to that particular answer. So keeping a margin of error and moving more towards the accuracy will help you to understand that the research is better validated and it is able to give you better results. So at the same time, the dependability of the source must also be seen where we are able to understand the value and then come back on it. So that's why when I say sufficiency, adequate data should be available. The data that is sufficient enough for the research to be conducted, that much amount of data should be available with us. Now, these steps are subclassified into three things. One is the applicability of the research objectives, the cost of acquisition and the accuracy of data. So when I say applicability, it should be applicable as per the research objective. What is the cost of acquisition? What is the accuracy of the data? To what level it is accurate? To what level it is taken into it? What is the cost at which I am acquiring data? What is the level at which the research objective is being? done. So all these factors have to be evaluated in the secondary data followed by the secondary data can be obtained through the internal sources that are well within the organization say from your own people from the process from the technology that you have built in from the external resources that is from outside the organization. So you have two kinds one is the internal resource and another one called as the external resources. Now government publications are the typical external resources where I want to give an example which has an extremely rich pool for the researchers where you will be able to get a whole lot of data which talks about the levels of operation, how it is being done, what are all the factors and it will have a lot of free websites which you can go and you can download the data as per your need followed by the non-governmental publications as I would say the Indian Cotton Mill Association, various chambers of commerce, Bombay Stock Exchange that we are talking about or the various uh, association of press media, export promotion council, all these factors are very very important today. Why? Because these kinds of data are not directly government published but they are being published by an association of trade partners and trade factors who give out a a lot of betterment in terms of the research data. Now we are also going to talk about syndicate services. What is a syndicate service? These are provided by certain organization which collect and tabulate marketing information on a regular basis for a number of clients and they subscribe for their services. So when I talk about Crystal, when I talk about ICRA, all these kind of people are who are into the only data tabulation and thing they give ratings, they are like credit rating agencies. So when I talk about Standard & Pure, when I talk about uh, KSA Technopack, these are all kind of companies which work only on data interpretation and all those things. So they typically try to collect data, they try to understand what is happening in the market and they get into the regularity behind it. So that's why I would say that syndicate services is very much needed altogether. With this, I would come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe that the session was of a great help and resource to you. In the upcoming sessions, we will be learning more about the data in terms of the business research and how it helps the modern corporate world. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.